So Tom Davenport, welcome back to the eMetrics Marketing Optimization Summit. Glad to be here. It's, it's good to have you back. You, you keynoted several years ago here in San Francisco. Uh, the economy has tanked and come back since then. It wasn't my fault, Jim, I promise. <laughs> no. And the uh, analytics industry seems to have burgeoned. The, the, you're getting the message out seems to be working. Our, our audience is growing. Um, I'm very pleased we're going to have a nice packed house for you. That's and great. wanted to, to ask you just a couple of questions to, to let the viewing audience know. Um, just a few insights of what you might be, pearls of wisdom you might be offering our audience uh, tomorrow. Uh, let's start easy. Um, your latest book, Analytics at Work. Give us, give us one of the stories about um, how changing the culture has benefited a company. What's, what's your favorite? Well, I mean, to me, that the, the big difference between that book and the, and the first book, Competing in Analytics, is much more about how analytics get embedded into decision making. Uh -huh. So um, one of my favorite stories is actually in the education industry where um, I, I went down to Miami-Dade School District and um, uh, heard about a great uh, use of analytics for student performance analysis. And mind you, you know, this sort of thing is happening all over the, the country, if not the world okay. now. It seemed to be happening in part because the superintendent, Rudy Crew, good Babson uh, graduate, uh, uh, was making it happen through sheer force of his own personality. But then he left, and people stopped doing a lot of the student performance, you know, oriented data analysis. Up in New York, however, they did similar things, had a warehouse, had some analytical tools, um, initiated by the superintendent, but they had a missing ingredient that Miami didn't have, a group of, of people they call inquiry teams at every school whose job it is to kind of connect the decisions to be made. You know, why aren't these sixth graders mastering reading with the amount of data and analysis tools that were available to support it. And I think you know more and more people need to kind of bring analytics and decision making closer together by that means or other ones. Well that's, okay, so the, the exciting part, the fun part of analytics is the, the, the puzzle, the problem solving, uh, the analysis. But given the overwhelming amount of data we have to look at, how, how do you choose the right problem to solve? Well, you, you probably shouldn't be doing it on your own. Uh, most organizations have uh, what they call decision makers who right. um, uh, ought to be uh, intimately involved in the process of deciding what problem to solve. Um, in my first book, I called that, uh, or no, it's actually in my second book, I called it the targets. The idea for your analytical targets is almost the most important decision that you make. Um, as an organization relative to analytics. And so, you know, it ought to be something that really moves the needle, strategic to your organization. I mean, if you can't find anything like that, then, you know, do whatever you want. But if you want to have an impact, choose a really strategic target. And mm -hmm. in most cases, you want to consult with your, your senior executives about what the target ought to be. So the data and the analysts are your resources, and, and where are you going to focus those resources? Exactly. Um, and. Where do you focus your technology? Where do you focus your data? I mean, there's uh, all sorts of choices to be made. So, so let's talk about uh, choosing resources. We've got data and more of it than we can do anything with. So let's lump that in with technology. Okay. We've got people, so we've got decision makers and the analysts. Yeah. Um, and then process in there. Um, which, what's the right mix these days of, of people, process, technology? The old. People process technology. Uh, It'll never go away. Cliche, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's a cliche for a good reason. I think because you do need all of those things. I think process is in very, sh and I say short supply. We don't use process all that much in analytics. I think we we will start to use it more as we start to think about how do we, you know, embed analytics into ongoing processes and mm -hmm. and and structures, but. Right now, we kind of invent it every time we go along, which is uh, not not ideal. Um, so probably we need more of that, but it's going to be relatively small for a while. You know, technology is the easy part. You know, you yeah. can buy it. There are lots of, I'm sure, booths you can visit at this conference and <laughs> sign checks and say, okay, I've got the technology thing. So I think the hard part is always the people side and getting the best ones in the first place and the ones that are 
focused not just on you know analytics but on relationships one of the things i'm going to say tomorrow is it ain't about the math it's about the relationships and um uh, math people and relationships people you know don't often come in the same person so yeah. um, that I think is one of the great challenges of this entire field. So the focus on people um, when you bring that up to an organizational level becomes a question of corporate culture so you know, creating a data driven <laughs> culture uh, how do you measure whether you're successfully creating a data driven culture? You use the data driven cultural <laughs> index uh, no, I um, I you know, I think that's really hard to do at a um, at a kind of an anal analyst level. It's something it's really hard to change the culture if it's not something that the senior executive team buys off on. Yeah. Um, if they do, you know, I think you'll see all sorts of manifestations of it. People will talk about it in meetings. People will say, "Excuse me, do you have any data to support that particular hypothesis?" Um, you know, if you say, I think, somebody will say, do you think or do you know? You know, uh, there'll be a lot of informal signals about it. I, you know, I don't know that you can measure it any, any, any more than that. The people who get ahead will be the ones who use data to make their decisions and not the ones who use fad, fashion, and faith. For, yeah, fad, fashion, and faith. That's a good one. <laughs> well, I'm curious in, in your wanderings around, what's the latest really interesting new data stream you've, you've tripped over? Oh, I, you know, video analytics, I think, are oh. quite interesting. I've been doing a lot of work uh, with the IIA, the International Institute for Analytics, which is represented here on a analytics in retail. And they're very excited about video analytics for a couple of reasons. One, you know, you can use them to see whether somebody's actually watching, looking at that promotion or that in-cap display before they buy. And also you can use it to see, you know, who's stealing <laughs> from your in-cap display. Um, you know, we don't have enough people to kind of watch all the video that we take today whether mm -hmm. it's in crime or intelligence or retail or whatever so we're going to have to have some analytics to say um, you know to chew through some of that that uh, footage for us in fact maybe some analytics are viewing this footage that we're creating right now and analyzing the bejeepers out of us <laughs> um, okay last question a, a little bit of, uh, of advice your your nephew uh, is responsible for taking over a huge analytics project for a big company. Uh, what's what's your avuncular advice? Well, um, I hope that this um, nephew would uh, pay more attention to my advice than my children actually have. <laughs> but um, uh, I would say, you know, step back a little bit and start to ask some kind of meta-analytics questions. What decision are we trying to address here? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen with, you know, the various results that I create in the, in the analysis? If nothing's going to change, maybe, you know, we want to uh, review this whole process. Um, uh, who are the stakeholders for this particular analysis? Um, you know, how quickly can I get them a you know a quick prototype? I'm going to say something about right. this tomorrow too, so that they'll say no, that's not what I had in mind at all. But it'll give you a much better idea. Of, you know all these agile methods that we've used in system development. I think we can right. use in analytics as well. So they're kind of more meta decision, meta analysis questions than the details of the analysis itself. Excellent advice, as always. Thank and you, thank sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. My pleasure.